Phases of the Moon The moon has been a major part of every culture throughout history, and many cultures have studied it. With startling accuracy, the ancient Greeks used the phases of the moon to determine how big the moon is compared to Earth. These regular and predictable phases have fascinated people for thousands of years. And thanks to science, we know exactly why they happen. As the moon moves in its orbit, different portions of the moon are lit by the sun in space. And we can only see the parts of the moon that the sunlight reflects in our view from Earth. This is why we see different phases of the moon as it passes through its lunar cycle. One half of the moon is always lit by the sun, with the exception of a lunar eclipse, where the moon lines up directly behind the Earth, blocking the sunlight from hitting it. As the moon orbits the Earth, it also spins. The speed of rotation, along with the speed of the orbit, allows the same side of the moon to be seen from Earth at all times. There are eight phases of the moon, beginning with the new moon phase, where the moon is not visible to us on Earth unless there is a solar eclipse. After the new moon phase, the moon goes through the waxing phases, waxing crescent, first quarter, and waxing gibbous. During the waxing phases, the amount of light area that we can see from Earth increases over time from right to left if you are viewing from the northern hemisphere and the opposite in the southern hemisphere. Next is the full moon phase, where all of the moon is visible. Finally, the moon enters the waning phases, waning gibbous, last quarter, and waning crescent. During the waning phases, the amount of light area decreases or the darkened area increases from right to left if you're viewing from the Northern Hemisphere and the opposite in the Southern Hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, we can tell if the moon is waxing or waning based on whether the right side of the moon is dark or light. In the Southern Hemisphere, the effect is just the opposite. As the moon begins to become visible, we come to a waxing crescent moon where one quarter of the moon is visible. We then come to a first quarter moon, where half of the moon is visible. With a waxing gibbous moon, three quarters of the face of the moon is visible. During a full moon, all of the moon is visible. The same steps happen in reverse on the waning side. Waning gibbous moon, last quarter moon and waning crescent moon. The moon then makes a full cycle back to the new moon phase. The full lunar phase cycle takes 29.5 days. The moon's gravitational pull strongly affects Earth's oceans. The tides are an effect of the gravitational pull of the moon and sun. However, the sun's gravitational pull is only 46% of that of the moon here on Earth. During the new moon and the full moon, when the moon and sun are the most aligned with Earth, the gravitational pull is magnified, giving us stronger tides known as spring tides. Likewise, the tides are the weakest at the waxing and waning quarter moons when the sun, moon, and earth are the farthest from alignment. These are known as neap tides. The sun, moon, and earth interact together in ways that affect life on earth's surface. And the way we track these effects is through the phases of the moon.